get cozy over better because today I'm risking my channel to play more of Fake World Zen at 4 a.m. Where were we? We're in the water for some reason. Why are we in the water? I'm in the water. See water bubbles coming down. Doesn't that blur the eyes? How can you see clearly? That's weird. <laughs> I've been into a swimming pool before. I'm sure that's not how it looks uh, underwater. I can't move my body. I can't breathe. Wait, am I dead? Where am I? Why does it hurt so much? Are you technically dead if you don't have a consciousness? Because if you don't have a consciousness, then you're dead. Because dead is dead. But if you still are able to narrate like this, does it count that you're dead? I don't think so. Why am I here? I was only trying to remember what happened earlier. That's right. I fought guys from another school, and I lost. To get revenge for Sheena, I stood alone against a group of delinquents. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is it this the guy that got uh, cemented, <laughs> got thrown to the bottom of the ocean? Like, there was an ocean in where they live? Holy shit. That was reckless. That would describe me as well. Of course, things would end like this. If I thought about it normally, I should have known that it was a battle I could not win. But I couldn't do it. I was willing to die to accomplish my goal. I struggled desperately, wanting to take back what was irreversible. I wanted to retake what made me what I am so that I could remain who I am. It's because I didn't realize it until I lost her. I've been avoiding her for so long, I didn't even realize it. Alright, am I dead? I stood alone against students from another school, the ones who killed Sheena. I was encased in concrete. Apparently, I was sunk to the bottom of the sea. Wait, he got beat up by a group of people, so the guy in the black trench coat is like, Nah, I didn't kill your um, friend or whatever. I, I thought he was the guy, so he's just the guy who says, Well, if they're dead, he's probably went to the paradise or whatever. <laughs> I was probably sunk to the bottom of the sea. <laughs> oh, so casual. They did me a great service. <laughs> really? Can't go back to Earth anymore. I'm dead. So instead of going back to Earth, you go to the fucking ocean. <laughs> Still part of the earth, no. And yet, I feel I should have difficulty breathing. It's like my consciousness is still here. Ugh. I I remember when I was swimming and I breathed in while being underwater. Oh, it's so painful. Let's review how I got here. No, don't do that. <laughs> to think that the school's most difficult kid tried to play hero, and now I can't fix things. I can't save Sheena. I can't take revenge. My mother will be left all alone, and I died in vain. It makes me laugh. <laughs> What a joke of a life. A dry laugh comes out from deep within my throat. Strangely, I have no regrets. I did the right thing, right, Mom? No, you don't. didn't. You didn't. <laughs> you fucked up. Should have called the police. But I let Sheena go home by herself. If I had held Sheena's hand back then, then I wouldn't have let her go home alone. Yeah, asshole. If I kept her with me, this might not have happened. But there's no point in thinking about what if. I'm full of regrets. I can't be honest. And I'm always like this. I realized this far too late. My life was dog shit. A complete pile of shit. It makes me laugh. The ramen, the friendship, the love. I've already forgotten the taste of the ramen we all ate. When I thought of what happened between Sheena and those other students, I saw red. So pointless, my life. I didn't bother to try hard. But why did she keep following me around, asking me to work hard? I felt lonely when she wasn't there. I get it. Did I love her? I wish I had told her. If I knew that today was my last day, I should have said something yesterday. But I wouldn't have been able to understand that. Past me was an idiot. I didn't think about the future. It was a real shit life. It wasn't worthless. There you go. <laughs> okay. I hear a voice and open my eyes. There, of course, how convenient she shows up. The concrete has become translucent like glass. Sheena seems to be reflected in it. This must be that light people see when they die. Or I'm hallucinating. No, I'm really here. It's me, Sheena. God damn it, this game is like presenting. Hey, look at that. You guys will be together if you, uh, if one of you dies and goes to paradise. This is so awful. <laughs> You're romanticizing the feeling of dying and shit. The last moments before your inevitable death. Huh? Shouldn't you be dead? Yeah, right. What? Are, yeah, I'm saying, right? What are you doing here? Yeah, I died. Are you a ghost? Did you come to my place as an apparition? Sure did. <laughs> it's everything you were doing, Sayataka. I watched you for a long time. God damn it, this music is so triumphant. It doesn't suit the scene at all. <laughs> this, should be a, this should be a tragedy. After you died, I got worried. I'm always by your side, right? 
I was worried that you were crying all by yourself. I'm not crying. Are you here to laugh? I had a shameful, wasteful death. It was pathetic. I'm not here to laugh. I'm just worried about you. I'm pathetic. You know that, right? Don't bug me anymore. I'm dead. You fucking asshole. You just said that you wanted to tell her everything. But now that she's here, you're like, I'm still acting like a fucking idiot and not tell her what I want to say. Fuck you, guy. Yeah, I know. You were hard on me because you wanted to hide your weakness. You mean... Sayataka, you're so reckless. You always push yourself and act like a delinquent even though you really feel lonely by yourself. You want someone by your side. Don't look into my heart. I'm not. I know this because I've been with you a long time. Sayataka, you're actually very kind, considerate, and lonely. Don't <laughs> say anything embarrassing, idiot. Do you know it's okay to cry? Idiot, I can't cry, okay? There's no way I could do that in front of you. You are crying. You've been crying for a long time. Your heart screams the pain it's feeling. That's why I'm here. I was hoping I could talk to you one final time. I see. I'm happy that you worked real hard for me, Sayataka. But to be honest, I wanted to forget about me and live your life to the fullest. I could never do that. It's because you... What about me? I lose my voice as I'm about to say it. Go ahead. It's the last time. You were important. There we go, Sayataka. Did you care about me? Don't make fun of me, idiot. Oh, sorry. Fucking asshole. This guy, I just want to punch him in the face. I say the thing already. I care about you too, Sayataka. You've been on my mind for a long time. I'm sorry. Real sorry. Why are you apologizing? Well, I wish I had told you that when I was still alive. <laughs> what? I mean, Sayataka, that... I loved you. Pond say that a drop falls from one of Sheena's eyes. Does the tear go upwards or downwards? Because they're falling down. <laughs> they're upside down. I love you too. I see you as family. It hurt, didn't it? Did it hurt? I'm sorry I couldn't save you. I regret leaving you alone that day. More than that, I love you. No, I have loved you. I have always loved you. I love you. I love you, Sayataka. Sheena can't stop crying because she knows we can't touch anymore. If only I was buried to concrete while separating us. <laughs> I can't hug her again. I wanted to be with you forever. I thought we would grow up together, get married, and that I would live happily with you. Then we would give birth to a baby and raise it with lots of love. When we were able, we would get a cat and spend our old age relaxing together. But I don't need a life of abundance or wealth. I don't care if I'm poor. If I can be with you, then that's all I need. No matter what happens, we can overcome it together, right? Up until now, we have always worked together. Right. But we can't do that anymore. When we die, it's all over. I can't see you anymore. I can't touch you. Don't get so upset. I love you too. I love you. Oh, sorry, Taka. Too late, fucking asshole. I love you so much. I love you more than anything else in the world. The emotions I've been holding back are welling up. Drops fall from my eyes. Hey, look, the tears are going up. <laughs> I was too nervous and obstinate to say it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to take revenge. I wanted to be by you more than anyone else in the world. That's why I... Yeah, thank you, Sarataka. I love you. Yeah, I would really like to hold you tight right now, but we're dead, aren't we? Oh, Sarataka. Don't cry. I'm right here. I'll be with you until the end. Yeah. Please stay with me forever. Don't let me go again. I know. I won't take my eyes off you again. Our hands can no longer be held together. I can no longer hold her body. I can no longer wipe away her tears. So frustrating. The most important and irreplaceable person in the world, the one who saved me, is crying in front of me. Just looking at her makes me feel distraught. Yeah, please stay by my side. Even if I am reborn, I will love you again. I only like you, Sayataka. We'll start over again from the beginning. Yeah, Sayataka, I love you. Next time, tell me you love me. Let's hold our hands properly. Don't be shy. Ugh. Yeah, I love you. I will. I will definitely do that next time. I will save you before things become unfixable. Bubbles float to the surface. The area becomes dark. My appearance and consciousness becomes hazy. Yeah, I will never forget you. Never. Upon saying that, she smiles happily. Then, our souls sink to the bottom of the ocean. 
God damn it, that was really emotional. <laughs> Hit me in the feels when I saw them, I couldn't believe it. Those are definitely my words. After finishing my work, just before going to sleep, I checked the internet. The text on a particular image I happened to see caught my attention. The text on that image was posted by a creator suspected of plagiarism. It's identical to a piece of text I plan to use for a work that will soon be released. How? I think I'm the only person who used those words. I put my life into my work. Others and I made these words. They were made from our thoughts and views. The words are related to the complex drama people have. They give color to a love story. But what is this? My work should be unique. What are the exact same lines doing there? I download the work and look it over closely. Uh-oh. Someone saw the plagiarism. As I go home from my part-time job by train, I look at my essayness as usual. A comparison of my work and Kamisama's work is going viral. What? Is Kamisama angry or making fun of me? I can't tell from what she wrote. It looks like other people are causing a stink about me, committing plagiarism, and making an unauthorized copy. Looks like I've got a problem on my hands. Send a message to copy someone without delay. Sorry, I'll delete it out of respect for your works. Then a little later, a reply arrives. So, what do you think about your work? Something something in relation to my work, something something. Kami someone knows. She knows I copied her work. I'm sorry, I'll get rid of that too. Deleting it, that will solve this. Or at least, that's what I thought. I thought you would agree. Kami someone then replied with the following. Is there anything else you'd like to share? I'm consulting with others on this. If you do not intend to cause harm, then please understand that you have hurt others with your plagiarism. I trust that you will aim to make original works in the future. Kamisama said she believed in me. She didn't mention deleting it, so I guess I caught a lucky break there. That night when no one was looking, I deleted my social media accounts. Oof. All that followers. God damn it. Hey, look, it's Misao. Oh, wait, no, that's not Misao. That's someone else. <laughs> yeah, she's someone from Paranoia something something. And Dice Psycho, the girl. What's her name? God damn it. We did a dream at 4 a.m. It's a place where one can meet someone from far away. A girl stands in the center of a flower field under a star sky. I wonder what's her story. Uh, she, Her works, her games are not translated, so I'm not sure who. Misao, there you go. Is what you've been seeing a dream? Or is it reality? Even I don't know which one is correct. This is a planet of love, madness, and the bizarre. It's a fake world created by God. This is a cruel, extreme, and unreasonable world. Hey, she said the thing, no matter how you look at it. Still, this is the only place where we can live. That is our fate. <laughs> Your fate is to die over and over again. That's hilarious. However, your God is cruel and shit. <laughs> That's a terrible sense of, has a sadistic sense of humor. It may be a cruel, extreme, and unreasonable world, but that's what makes it so beautiful, right? I'm not sure about that, but okay. What about the feelings in you and everyone else? Yeah, you give me entertainment. Thanks a lot. Those feelings are unquestionably real. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's amazing how things that aren't real make you feel stuff. So don't forget, are we here, truly? Well, it's better than being in your world. Holy shit. 4 a.m. at the usual time. I wait for her on a bench in the park. She's late, nearly 10 minutes late. Usually, she would be here on time. And when I was about to give up and go home. Fanny. I see her standing at the entrance of the park and run to her. Fanny, what happened? Fanny looks down. She has a disappointed look on her face. Oh, no, it's nothing. Did something happen? I was just thinking about how things are turning out. How things are turning out? Ojisan, do you believe in destiny? Nope. Destiny? For example, what if your life was decided from the very beginning and could not be changed? I guess it's uh, believable for characters like you in fiction to believe in destiny because all of it is pre-written by, <laughs> by the author. So uh, in your view, yeah. But I, on the other hand, nope. I don't know. Doesn't that sound boring? You're asking me? For example, let's say a cat is destined to get hit by a car and die. Would it be useless to try and change that? If it was in my power to change that, I would... I want to change destiny, but it's hard. Destiny keeps pulling me in more and more. Well, if, if, I'm, if I'm destined to get hit by a car, I'm just gonna enjoy the last moments of my life, I guess. That must be tough. It might be pointless, but would you like me to continue my story? Go ahead. Yeah, of course. Let's go.
My name is Tenry. Is he gonna be the next to die? And her and his friends. Angels in heaven would understand how it work. How? It might sound minor, but for whatever reason, I have been extremely lucky. Well, aside from losing my parents when I was young. <laughs> Welfare from the government and my part-time job allows me to survive on my own. However, I barely have time to study and my grades aren't very good. But due to my natural luck, I am able to get multiple choice questions correct, even though I missed the relevant lessons. That isn't the only thing that led me to think I can get by. But it's also because my best friend Tara is by my side. He cared about me when I was closed off in the classroom and he chose to be with me. On New Year's Day, I drew a fortune with Taro when we did the New Year's shrine visit commonly done in Japan. My luck was great, but Taro's luck was awful. I chalk it up to a coincidence. But over time, I came to believe that this was not the case. I started to doubt myself. I wondered if I was robbing others of their good fortune. Oh, I see. I was looking at the sky from the window, and I was thinking, I wish I could fly freely in the sky, like a bird. What are you saying? Taro, you sometimes sound like a poet. <laughs> you think I'm a poet? How embarrassing. Being a bird doesn't mean freedom. Maybe, to me, a bird looks very free. It could go anywhere it wants. I'm sure Tara knows where I want to go. You want to meet your late parents, right? I knew he would say that. I know why Tara cares about me. Is he scared that I'll run to my parents the moment he takes his eyes off of me? Oh, shit. He wants to follow in their footsteps. Hey, who's- Oh, God damn it! That's from Yandarella. Holy shit. Let me remember the name. Uh, Hinata Honoka. I think that's Honoka. Wait, I think Hinata is a much cuter name, so that's Hinata. We don't have 4 a.m. yet. It's a place where one can meet someone from far away. Standing on a hill at night under a large tree is a blue-haired girl. There is a katana beside her. He <laughs> had the katana. He gave it away. <laughs> Stole yet, Hinata. Yes, I know my Charon lore. A boy and a girl were childhood friends. That boy is Hinata's prince. A girl, Hinata saw that girl as a horrible witch. Nevertheless, Hinata's attachment to the witch was strong. But Hinata's hate was just as strong. That witch liked Hinata's prince. Hinata would have remained friends with her if the prince didn't exist. That may have been a happier reality. But she and Hinata wanted the happiness for ourselves. That is how the story ends. It is nearly over. Cinderella's magic was supposed to break at midnight, but Hinata was given some extra time until now. <laughs> well then. I'll be going. Thanks for the story. I didn't really <laughs> learn anything from it. <laughs> what was the point of you? Hey, you there? Cherry talks to me to break out of my stupor. Huh? You okay? You look pale. Terry doesn't seem to be in a good shape. I fear he's having a mental breakdown due to the recent event incidents. I thought you said events. I uh, met a weird guy earlier. A weird guy? Yeah, a blonde guy in a black coat. Could he be talking about the club president? It's a reasonable assumption the club president is a weird guy. So what do you do? Says something about a paradise. I thought it was something being talked about in school. Did he say that when you die, you go to paradise instead of heaven or hell? Yeah, something like that. He asked me if you would like to come too. I think he's the president of the Paradise Research Club. Ayura is part of that club. Just ignore him. Something's off about that guy. Really? Who said he's shady? Ayuri stepped in between us at the perfect time. Yeah, Ayuri. I heard someone say that the president of the Paradise Research Club is suspicious. Well, of course he is. He doesn't talk much, and it's obvious that there's something wrong with him. Terry said that he got a weird invitation from him this morning. You have to do something about this. I tell her what I honestly think. Well, the club president is strange, but he's not a dangerous person. His little sister, Fanny Chan, is that cutie you know of. Sorry, I was just thinking. It's okay, Terry. I'll say it. We're probably thinking the same thing. I should speak for him. Is the club president related to the incidents? Ayuri narrows her eyes a little. I heard that they were seen having contact with a guy in a black coat before they disappeared. I intentionally avoid mentioning the names of Ryujiro, Shina, and Sayataka. Possibly. So what's that all about? Isn't the Paradise Research Club supposed to be fighting against rumors? Sorry, I can't give you the details. However, it is true that there are research results and the mystery is about to be solved. We are currently looking into whether Paradise really exists. 
upon saying that Ayuri leaves the classroom. Wow, it suddenly got colder. Want to go have lunch? Sure. We lay our lunch boxes on our desk. Listen, Henry, you shouldn't believe the rumors, okay? I know, it's okay. I'm just a lucky guy. I'll manage, somehow. Okay. Aside from Henry and I, there would have been a Yuri friendly Rajiro, Shina, and Sayataka. We should have been laughing while being surrounded by many friends. I feel like I was always around all sorts of people, but now I feel lonely. Right. My wonderful angel Fanny isn't coming anymore. <sighs> Do you really like that girl that much, you lollicon? <laughs> Being a lollicon is fine. I'm a gentle manly lollicon, so I will never cause trouble for her. Isn't that what lollicons aspire to be? Lollicons aren't perverts. The good lollicons admire from afar. But you're starting to act like a pervert. With just the two of us, eating lunch felt lonely. But aren't you guys used to that though before you guys oh, whatever? Hey look, that's Honoka. We didn't dream at 4 a.m. It's a place where one can meet someone from far away. A wharf at night is a red-haired girl stary, staring at the moonlit sea. Haha, a girl and a boy were childhood friends. But there was a cheery girl who admired Cinderella. That girl ended up with her prince. Oh wait, what? So Hinata ended up with the main character? That sucks because Honoka is best girl. Tomboys are best girl. What are you talking about? I did too. The prince. I love them. Wait, you ended up with the... Print with the main character too? What? Which is it? But I couldn't say it. I couldn't say I loved him. Oh, you were in love with him, but you couldn't say okay. They were both important to me. My best friend. She was important to me. What? I'm not lying, but I'll admit that I was using my feelings for my best friend as an excuse. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. Should I have told him? Yeah. Dumbass. Could I have married the prince? Yeah. But it's too late now, isn't it? Nope. You could always rewrite the thing since you were already rewritten. Yeah. I wanted to be a princess too. But you're perfect the way you are. What are you talking about, dumbass? With my work done, I take off my apron and go to the break room. Wait, what? There's a small girl, Rikana Senpai. What are you doing here? Wow, you usually aren't here that long, Rikana Senpai. I had a long day today, so I've been... So I've been here since noon. How cool is that? Why is we kind of doing here? Should it shouldn't be uh, drowning in money or some shit? Thanks to you, I had to clean the drain in the back and I got all covered in grime. Uh, this is Rikana. She's my senior. She worked here part time before I started to work at the ramen restaurant. It's rare for you to stick around long. She's a part time worker who holds multiple jobs. She rarely stays at one workplace for very long. I've been free since noon. I figured I could make some extra money. There are some debts I have to p deal with. Yeah. Sounds like things are hard for both of us. I've known my senior for a long time. I often hear her stories about the past. Apparently she tried to scam a billionaire with amnesia by using a younger sister scam. Wait, so she failed? Ever since then she had trouble with making money and has now gone legit. Oh, really? So y your scam failed? We're kind of separate. Are you sure that it's okay for you to be here? Don't you have to go to another workplace? Right, sorry, but if I start slacking, my boss over there is going to get annoying. See you later. She hurries to the changing room. We kind of said by cleaning the drains, I was supposed to do that today. I guess I forced her to do something she didn't want to do. I feel like I should admonish myself for my good luck. People around me are unhappy because of me. There are times when I wish I never existed at all. We kind of comes out of the locker room with a bang and punches her time clock. I don't know if I'll make it in time, but this won't be easy. I must have been too slow. Well, work hard, Tenry. Yeah, thank you for your hard work. She's about to head out, she stops suddenly. Tenry, you probably think that other people don't know what you're thinking, right? What's this all of a sudden? Listen, there has been a lot of trouble lately. Yeah, that's true. I wonder if she can see into my heart. Don't rush things, okay? <laughs> what are you talking about, Rikana Senpai? I'll be waiting for you to show up to work tomorrow, okay? <laughs> well, goodbye. Yep. Oh, I'm tired. Pekana puts on her shoes and goes outside. A mountain park with a wide view of the city at night. No one knows that I stop here on my way home from my part-time job. The stars shine beautifully and brightly in the night sky. I like this place. I like this view. And next to it is a cliff one can jump off of. <laughs> okay. If I were to fall off of it, death would be certain. Looking down from the sight, I feel the fear of death. But if one day I have the courage to take this step, 
I hear the sound of footsteps walking in the grass behind me. Is the blind guy in the black coat? The president of the Paradise Research Club. Do you wish to go to Paradise? Club president, I don't know for sure if you're a murderer or not, but I haven't done anything. I'm just talking. Okay, what exactly is Paradise? Do people go there when they die? It would appear that way. It's a place where those who disappear go. His responses are vague and suspicious. I remain on guard. Your good fortune is making others unhappy. How did you... I have never told anyone about that. Then, did the people around me die because of me? If you see it that way, then it must be so. I see. Then, Rikun, I wonder when you will have the courage to take the first step. First step, Salulu. The reason I come here, it's... When you take in the view, you must feel sorry for the lives you took, right? Are you afraid of death? How do you know about that? What do you know about me? What do you know? If things keep going as they are, you might even take the life of your precious best friend. Taro. I'm scared that could happen someday. Afraid that Taro might get dragged into something horrible because of me. There's still time, Tenrikun. I... I couldn't say it for a long time. I thought people would get worried. I thought that if I revealed my true thoughts, people would leave me. I might end up alone. I know. If paradise really does exist, if there is such a dreamlike world, please take me there. Then I'll be able to see mom and dad again and everyone else. I'll eventually be able to meet Taro too, right? I have faith. I take a step off the cliff. So he's convincing people to... Murder themselves, kill themselves, suicide themselves, holy shit! Oh, what an asshole! Oh, good god, that bitch from Full Boko Yochi! I don't know he's a fucking. <laughs> it's a place where. <laughs> I'm recalling the memories, it's so funny, this fucking bitch. In the courtyard of a certain kindergarten, a pink haired girl plays alone in the sandbox. I'm. Katomi, that. Fucking, <laughs> someone who isn't happy until I get to say what I want to say. I'll say everything I like, dislike, things I'm happy with, things I'm not happy with. Children don't have a sense of right or wrongs or some shit. They're innocent because they don't have evil thoughts. Children are, children are the most evil things on the planet. What are you talking about? But that makes them even scarier, though. <laughs> isn't this world full of shit? Cute Angel Katami thinks it would be idiotic to hold back. So you shouldn't hold back either. That's not a good excuse, though. That's what separates us from civ, uh, from civil, civil, from being civilized. <laughs> we have to hold back. That's why we set rules and laws and regulations. Be more like me and live as you please. Well, before reality gets you, anyway. Dude, what the fuck? That's awful. It would be sad if someone you love committed suicide. You push that guy to commit suicide. <laughs> you. Constantly bullied the main character into killing themselves, you fucking bitch. Hey, why are you looking like an idiot? You're surprised to hear me say about someone you like. You're surprised to hear me say that about someone you like. How stupid are you? You forgot what I said already. Even birds can remember better than you. Call me a bird brain? I told you, didn't I? We should say what we want to say. That's why I like you. Don't think too hard on it, okay? That's so dumb. <laughs> I like you, therefore I'm calling you names and shit. When I learned of Tenry's death, I'm left crouching on the floor of the roof. The world is cruel, isn't it? As usual, Ayuri looks at the golden sky, appearing happy. Why does God want to make you suffer so much? Is God bullying you, Tarakun? Or are you being toyed with, hoping to cause as much suffering as possible? Stop it! Did I offend you? I'm sorry. It's okay, it's not your fault. I was just wondering if there's anything I can say considering how depressed you are. Just leave me alone. Yeah, you need some time alone. I don't like it when you're in pain. I'm sorry, I'm not really in the mood to talk right now. I'll always be by your side, okay? I'll take all of your pain, okay? Upon say that Ayuri takes my hand. Life is precious and beautiful. I understand I might be a fake too, but I understand now. Your tears taught me. Those drafts which I have seen so much are the answer. People cry when they feel emotions that cannot be expressed with words. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's a natural human response to some things. 
They aren't just for Tenry, they're for everyone who is gone. I cherished them so much I couldn't bear the pain of losing them. That's why I'm crying. The face of someone who's crying. Yep. The world is this beautiful. Why end it? Maybe God couldn't take it anymore. Maybe God didn't want to be in such a cruel world, and that's why God disappeared. Huh. Interesting things to think about. Hey, look! It's Red from the dark side of Red Riding Hood, even though there's no red name for her, right? There is no name for her. We didn't dream it for it. They just call her Red because she has the Red Riding Hood thingy. It's a place where one can meet someone from far away. What are you going to talk about? The how many times you've been uh, cloned or like a, a group, an army of you being sent to your grandmother to get eaten alive? <laughs> a girl wearing a red hood stands in the dark forest. You going to talk? Oh my god, did she did talk. Once upon a time, a little girl and her mother lived near a certain forest. The girl wearing a red hood was asked by her mother to go to her grandmother's house in the forest. Take no detours. Keep that in mind, little Red Riding Hood entered the forest. I don't know what happened after that. You know what happened to me? Yeah, I do. Uh, you don't need to say anything. Yeah, it's hilarious. There's just so many things happening to you. I mean, what happened to you is not hilarious, but the thought, the why it happened is so stupid. That's, that's what I mean by hilarious. I'm not interested. It, it probably isn't very good anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. That's fair, you're feeling sorry for me, but there's no point in worrying about it. Not all stories end beautifully, yeah. Like, what's up with great stories that end in such a stupid fucking way? <laughs> uh, let's see, what are the stories that end in such a stupid fucking way? Well, according to a lot of people, Prison School, a manga which I love, even <laughs> it's so hilarious, it's comedic, and etchy, they say it ended in such a weird way, even though I think the story, I think the ending made sense. But what is um, a story that ended so... Oh, Game of Thrones. A lot of people hated that shit because it made no sense. Uh, the Last Jedi was a fucking train wreck. So stupid. Let's see. Not all stories end beautifully. My story happened to be a dark one. Yeah, that's why it's called The Dark Side of Red Riding Hood. Haha, <laughs> pun. I know, I get it. You just happen to see what lies in the darkness. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. Wind brushes against my cheeks. My body descends rapidly down to the bottom of the cliff. The city lights appear to be upside down and pass in front of me at high speed. Yeah, I'm floating in the air right now. Sure about that? Unknown to anyone or in other words, alone. I'm falling to my death. It was always like that. I was always alone. No, there were people who worried about me, but I hate hit but I hated their pitying eyes. There you go. I was I was hating? It felt like hypocrisy. I was scared even though they would hold out their hands. What would happen if I took such a hand? That's someone else's hand. Take it. And who knows what they'll do. What I had no control over was their situational kindness. I knew this. I knew I didn't want to know. But since I knew this, I lived my life without depending on anyone or anything. Now, no one could truly save me. The only people who could save me were my parents. My friends have hit a wall where we wouldn't be able to understand each other on a deep enough level. God, it's too loud. I can't read. <laughs> That's how people are. That's why I gave up on believing in others from the bottom of my heart. I looked from the classroom window, wishing I could be a bird. If I could fly freely in the sky like that, I could go anywhere. It's freedom incarnate. Tied to nothing with nothing to do with anyone. I could just do what I want, going where the wind takes me, where my heart takes me. Man, you should have been honest in the first place. I wish I could live like that. You should have been honest with your friends. If I was a bird instead of a human, I wouldn't have been too rooted to the ground like this. I wanted to be free and say something disagreeable. Taro would tease me about that. But Taro, I really got carried away. It is as you suspected. I wanted to fly away. That's why I felt this day would come eventually. I felt this day would come when I would throw myself off this cliff. I'm sorry. I'm a wimp. I really did it. I'm a stupid person, I know. I probably won't go to heaven, hell, or even paradise. But... Finally, I'm able to fly. God damn it, you should have taken airplane tickets, you asshole. Dumbass. Upside down, it's like my body's floating through the air. No fear, no screams, or you could do, do skydiving. For some reason, this isn't scary. Instead, it feels familiar and warm. It's a weird feeling. I have always wanted to do this. I wanted to try something like this. I have always wanted to fly in the sky. Skydiving, I'm sure. 
I lost my parents when I was able to remember things. Soon enough, I realized I couldn't remember their faces. I hated myself for that. I couldn't forgive myself for forgetting what they looked like when they were alive. You don't keep a photo. My memories of their faces and voices were foggy. What expression did they make? I can't remember anything now. When I try to remember, my heart is filled with pain. Where did I come from? Where did they come from? I'm not blaming my parents for their disappearance. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe that's why I was able to establish my own identity. Why was I born? I live a dull and gray life. I was afraid that I would make the people around me unhappy again. With the night breeze, the city lights are reflected in my eyes as I fall. I feel I can see some faint human figures in them. A man and a woman, two shadows are approaching me. Maybe I'm hallucinating. I rub my eyes. There are definitely two people there. I feel like I've seen them somewhere before. Wait. No way. Mama? Papa? When I see them, I find myself saying something strange. I see. That's what I called them when they were alive. Mom, Dad, Mama, Papa, like a kid. Of course, I was so that old when they left. It looks like so much time has passed. I forgot about that. You did a good job, Jerry. What? Jumping off a fucking cliff? I'm sorry for leaving you all alone. You were lonely, weren't you? Damn right he was. By their voice, I could tell it's them. I thought you couldn't tell them. Uh, you were always forgetting the sound of their voices. I feel I'd forgotten, but now I feel an odd certainty. Mama, Papa. Come on, Henry. Come join Papa and Mama. You sure have grown, Henry. My the familiar voice makes me cry. I'm young, but my throat is so tight I can barely speak. Mama, Papa, it's me. I try to hug them both, forgetting that I'm free falling in the air. I sob profusely. Tears drip down on my face. I all this time. I know, we watched you try to live on your own. Yeah. Cherry, we'll now be able to be together forever. Yeah, yeah. Ever since I lost them, I've been pretending that everything is fine. But I was crying inside, now you're crying outside. I lived without showing the tears to anyone. Couldn't let anyone see them, so I hid them. Why not? I never showed them to my best friend Taro either. Man, if you only showed them, you could probably have gotten given the help you got. Uh, if you have showed them earlier, then maybe you were... You could have been given the help you needed. I pretended to be a normal person holding back the urge to cry many times. I did my best. It was hard to be normal. It's because the people around me are the ones who are blessed. They obviously grew up differently than me. Human beings live their lives with their happiness in mind. I didn't have that. It was frustrating. I played it cool and said things are okay because I'm a guy. I made sure to avoid worrying the people around me. Yep, that's what men are supposed to do. I made sure to say that things are okay. I can't say I'm not okay. I can't say I'm lonely. A child can't be fine on their own, right? I knew something so simple that I could express it with a thought. I have always had to be strong. I couldn't let anyone take care of me, so I had to handle things by myself. I couldn't tell anyone. I had to swallow it down. I had to pretend it doesn't hurt. Pretend to be fine. I'm an idiot. I should have been nice to someone before this. I might have made someone unhappy. That's why I wanted to keep people at arm's length. But that might have been a bad idea. But if I didn't, I would feel sad that I forced my misfortune onto someone else when I lost them. I didn't want to involve anyone else. That includes Taro, Rikana, and my classmates. My parents might have passed their misfortune on to me when they died. That's what I believed. I'm sure they were watching over me the whole time. And it makes me feel happy and warm. I don't need anyone else. I'm not alone. However, when I think of who I left behind, I know I did something that can't be undone. I'm sorry, Taro. I'm sorry, Rikana. I'm sorry, everyone. I don't want to be the one that gets left behind anymore. Haven't I suffered enough already? Why do I have to live with this pain? Is it okay for me to behave like a victim? My heart was at its limit. It hurt so much I couldn't take it anymore. And so it fell apart at the slightest touch. That's all. Go ahead and laugh about me wondering if I should jump off the park cliff every day. I knew that no one would notice if I did this. After all, I said that everything is fine. I had a stupid belief that someone would stop me. But in the end, that didn't happen. What appeared was a Grim Reaper wearing a black coat. I understand the suffering of those who are left behind, and yet, I left people behind too. It's okay to hate me. I don't mind if you do. But please, don't forget. I was here. I was definitely alive. I will make sure to never hide it again. I will be more honest from now on. Too late. I will be able to laugh with everyone, be happy and sad, and otherwise be on their level. Next time, I will definitely attain the life where I laugh with everyone. I would think that my laugh was the best. Like an idiot, I prayed that such a day would come. And 
sound of a splat echoes below the park's cliff in the middle of the night. Oh shit. God damn it. That was that was tough. That was tough to go through. <laughs> uh, jumping off of something, suicide and all that stuff. That's fucking So I'm gonna edit here, fellas. This is fake worlds at 4 a.m. Literally getting riskier and riskier by the day. <laughs> If you want to try the game for yourself, support the Charon and all their games. It's on Steam. Uh, links are in the description. English patch also there. That is all for today. Stay safe and take care of yourselves.